So our speaker tonight uh, is Dr. Whitney Knauer, and she is from the University of Minnesota College of Veterinary Medicine. She splits her time between both research and teaching, and she does a lot of work with cows and small ruminants and lots of really neat things. So I will let her take it away here, and we're going to be talking about parasites and herd health uh, for small ruminants today. All right, great. Thanks, Brenda, and uh, thanks everyone for joining. Um, this is an exciting topic, especially for this time of year. Um, and so uh, without further ado here, we'll, we'll take it away. So the first thing um, that I, if you take nothing away from this presentation, except for this, this slide and this website, I think it will be a success. So the, this, this website, wormx.info, um, is put on by the American Consortium for Small Ruminant Parasite Control. And they really do a good job of having all kinds of resources um, for, for producers and for people who are interested in um, controlling parasites in small ruminants. So I, I encourage you, um, if you ever have any questions, um, to use this as kind of your, your first line of defense. Um, in the, the picture on the left there, if you click on that resources, you can find um, pretty much everything you need to know. Um, and then just another note is that um, a lot of this presentation um, was kind of guided um, from the, the handbook for the control of internal parasites of sheep and goats. And that's um, a, a document that the Ontario, um, the Canadians have, have put on um, that has a lot of really great relevant information, especially for us here um, in, in the upper Midwest in Minnesota. So what are our objectives today? So the, the first thing I'm going to go through is kind of discussing the, some, some characteristics of the, the most common internal parasites of small ruminants. Then we're going to go through and talk about detection um, and principles of treatment for your herd. And then we'll talk a little bit about management and prevention concepts. So there are... Um, quite a laundry list of parasites that are important for small ruminants. And so um, there are protozoal diseases. And if you were here with us on Thursday, you would have heard Dr. Joe talk about coccidia. Um, then we have the roundworms um, or Homunculus contortus, which I'm sure um, you all have heard about. And then we have some others um, that are important. So Ostratagia species, Trichostrongyl species, um, P. tenuous or the, the brain worm or the deer worm. Um, tapeworms and, and flukes. And we'll hit on those a little bit, but the ones that we're really going to focus on um, are these three. And so um, they're really the most important ones. And really, I, I guess you could argue that Helmonchus is probably the most important internal parasites of our small ruminants. And so I thought it would be um, a good idea to just kind of go through um, some characteristics of these worms and how they affect the animal, because that's really important when we're thinking about how to detect prevent and treat um, these parasites. And so Hamacus contortus, or the barber pole worm, or the blood worm, or the wire worm, um, gets its name from looking like a barber pole, um, and which is um, really the, um, the digestive tract and the reproductive tract um, that are kind of showing through the, through the worm. And what this worm really does well is suck blood. And so um, one worm doesn't seem like a lot of blood. It's um, 0.05 mils of blood loss per day. But we, when we get into even moderate infections, um, we, can, we can talk about losing a lot of blood in these animals. And if you think about the fact that a lamb um, has about eight cups of blood, if you have a really infected animal, that can be really, really detrimental. And so um, this worm can cause sudden death due to blood loss. And the biggest clinical sign that we see in these animals, especially early on, um, is anemia or those pale mucous membranes. And so we'll, if later in this presentation, we'll talk about famotia scoring, which I'm sure you've heard about, um, which is really the, the key way that we determine um, whether or not our animals have this parasite. Um, we'll typically see clinical disease in um, July and August, um, but we can see it earlier in the year due to a, a phenomenon called hypobiosis, um, which we'll talk about in a few slides. And then the adult worms can actually live quite a while in the animal. Um, so even if we, we have animals that don't seem terrible, um, you know, at the, at the end of the summer, those animals can still um, have disease caused by hemongus um, into, into November or December. Um, and then we have this worm. So this is uh, formerly Astrategia, but it also is called the brown stomach worm. 
And the way that this worm really affects our small ruminants is that um, it damages the stomach lining. Um, and so um, it leads to poor digestion. And the clinical sign we typically see with this is diarrhea. Um, we can also see ill thrift, we can see weight loss. And again, um, we commonly see this um, disease in, in late summer or fall, but there is some evidence that these worms can also overwinter um, in adult animals. And then the third is um, trichostrangulus, so also called the stomach hair worm. Um, and this affects the small intestine and the stomach of the animal. These worms, the adult worms, burrow into the stomach, um, and this again leads to poor digestion. So again, the most common clinical sign we would see in our animals would be diarrhea. Um, again, disease occurs most commonly in the late summer or fall, but again, these, these worms can, can live over winter. They're getting smarter and smarter, it seems. Um, and then on the right-hand side of this slide, I just want to show you um, that we, what these eggs look like. Um, and so the, the reason that, one of the reasons that this is such a challenge for us as veterinarians and for you as producers is that all of these, all of these worms, um, the eggs look the same. So we can't necessarily tell um, that we have a homonchus problem or a, a trichostrangulus problem. Um, we just know that we have round worms, which is why we need to use those other clinical signs to help us differentiate. And so I thought it would also be useful um, to go through the life cycle, because this is really important when we think about um, how we're trying to control um, these worms in the animal and in the pasture. And so here's the life cycle. Um, and we kind of have two stages, right? So we have um, parasites that are living in our sheep and goats. And then we have parasites that are, are living in the pasture. And so we're going to start with our adult worms in our animals. Um, and these, you know, they feed like we just talked about in the stomach or intestinal wall um, and cause disease and, and lay eggs. So these eggs are laid in the fecal pellet. And um, here they, they molt and they go through these stages um, where they molt into different larval stages. And so um, the first one is they go from an L1 stage to an L2, and that's where they're feeding on the actual pellet of the, of the feces. And so um, this is important because we think about some of the strategies to, to dry that fecal pellet out. Um, that can be useful in trying to decrease the number of larvae that we have on pasture. These um, larvae will then molt into what we call the L3. And this is the real, um, the real stage that can last a long time on pasture. So it's got a really protective coating um, and it can stay in the pasture in some, some, sometimes even over winter, but certainly for, for weeks to months. And so the L3 um, are non-feeding and they're protected from that harsh environment. Um, and then they leave the fecal pellet and they climb up the grass um, and then are eaten by our sheep and goats. And um, if the climate is unfavorable, somehow these worms know, um, they will stop their development and become what we call it arrested, in the arrested stage or, or basically like hibernation. Um, if it's favorable, then the parasite develops into the adult stage and then the cycle continues. And so when we think about this, typically we're talking about somewhere between 16 to 21 days from the time the parasite is picked up on the pasture to the time we're laying eggs. And typically we think about a three week cycle in the pasture, although this can be drastically shorter depending on environmental conditions. So sometimes, for example, homonchus contortus um, can go from egg in fecal pellet to um, ready to be eaten by our sheep or goats um, in five days. So it can, it can really depend on the environment. So um, what does this look like kind of in a goat or, or a sheep? Um, so um, young animals don't really have any immunity. Um, and they can, like, we, like I talked about, they can get sick with really moderate infestations. Um, certainly animals can develop immunity over time. Um, typically this happens like over the course of a grazing season, but it's really important to note um, when we're talking about vaccination or when we're talking about things like parasites that goats much more than sheep have really short lived immunity. So even if we have adult animals um, that are developing some immunity um, that won't last, maybe not even for the whole season. <laughs> 
And then there are other factors that can affect immunity. Um, if you think about nutrition being really important in this case, um, bypass protein is something that can, can help um, even moderately infested animals um, overcome that, that burden of, of worm. There's also documented genetic resistance, um, and, but this is more so studied and more so evident in, in sheep. And then again, these adults, adult animals, um, can carry infections from the previous season into the next season. And the way they do that is through this thing called hypobiosis. Um, probably the best thing to think about is, is it as being like the worm is hibernating. And so what happens is that um, when that worm is picked up on the pasture, it actually burrows into the stomach wall, into the stomach lining, and is really protective from the goat's immune system. And so if you were with us on Thursday, Dr. Joe talked about um, stress and stress being really, really important um, to try to prevent in our, in our sheep and goats, especially as it relates to disease. Therefore, um, if we think about when does a stressful event in our, in our sheep, in our ewes, in our does, um, lambing and kidding are, is a really stressful event. And so with that decrease in immunity, we actually get those worms um, emerging at that time. And it's what, um, what we refer to as peripartrogant rise or um, uh, spring egg rise. And so what this means is that we can have animals that look okay, um, that then they, they kid or they lamb three to four weeks later, those, um, those larvae have emerged, they become adults, they start sucking blood, um, they start causing diarrhea, and then you get eggs on pasture. Um, so this is a really, really important thing to consider as well um, when you're thinking about when you're going to deworm your animals um, and when you are going to turn those animals out on pasture. Okay, and then what about patterns of infection on pasture? Um, so probably the, the most important thing for you to know is that worms do not do well when it is hot and they do not do well when it is dry. So um, if you think about the larvae, um, it doesn't, the L3 stage, which is what is um, the infective stage on pasture, doesn't actually eat. So the energy that it has is the energy that it has. And if you think about um, hot weather actually increases metabolic rate. Um, so those, those worms um, basically run out of energy and they die. So um, that is why heat is, is our friend when we think about um, larvae. And then um, especially the L1s and the L2s, if it's dry outside, if we're keeping um, our animals off the pasture, for example, when it's, um, it's wet in the morning um, and, and trying to prevent that dew from helping those larvae climb up the, the, um, the grass, um, that will, will help prevent um, L1s and L2s, it will help drive them out. And so um, spring conditions or this time of year really favors rapid egg hatching and larval development. Um, high humidity also favors rapid egg hatching and larval development. Um, L3 even, we like to think about our, our really cold winters really helping um, with, our, with our parasites on pasture, but L3 can overwinter even in cold climates. Um, but usually they don't survive later than uh, June, but that again really depends on what the, what the weather is like that spring. And then um, probably a really important concept is that the L3 um, we can also survive indoors. So we'll talk a little bit um, later about um, things that we can do to, uh, to help prevent infection, um, which, is, which is housing animals on a dry lot or keeping them indoors. All right, so that's our first section where we talk about kind of the, the worms, what their, what their um, biology is in the animal, and then what they, their survival is like um, in different environments. These goat, goats are happily munching their green chop. 